Welcome to the show that looks at truth, fiction, and reality with a smirk. I'm Aaron Peterson. I'm Amanda Sink. And I'm Zach Parkerson. And welcome to Smirk. How's everybody doing? Are you excited? Thrilled. Wow. Soups thrilled. Totes thrilled. <laughs> I think we're kicking this one off with a with a win. I'm thrilled. Are you thrilled? Can you not hear the thrilled in my voice? There's it, so much. There's only so much thrill he can really. That was probably the most energy I've heard from him in all the episodes we've done. <laughs> and so, it's the yeah. sickest he's been. <laughs> <laughs> he's actually been dealing with quite a cold. So what a trooper for being here. Da -da -da -da. Oh yeah, I could never let listeners down. You two, I could let down no problem. <laughs> that's, You've done it plenty before. That's very cool. Well, this week, guess who? It's Amanda's turn again. Are you ready to share whatever it is? I'm ready to hear your story. I don't know anything about this one. It's a little bit lengthy. Is it longer than the trail? Because that was a, oh, that was a not. humdinger. <laughs> Somebody will have to time it and let me know. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> the trail, the formerly known as the Trail of Tears until Zach told me I was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a great name. Yeah. It just has some historical relevance that uh, <laughs> I don't think you were quite aware of. I was. I just forgot, and I've been shamed about that a couple times. So, whoops. Yep. Whoopsie daisy. All right. Well, Amanda, it is your turn. So, tell us your story. Here we go. Bags shuffle their way into empty space of the trunk packed high. Enough gear for these three individuals to each survive a road trip for a week and a half if they needed to, truly. A group who's excited to leave for a weekend and see what they so desire. A land that waits for one to approach it with peacefulness, joy, and anticipation. The GPS is set and the tires wear their tread as they take this collection of individuals to their intended destination. Each trip has people who handle long drives in a different manner. The baby driver of the day, Robert, follows the course mapped out for him. Life is what it is, and he's ready to experience it. Eileen is the rambunctious one of the group. She loves to have fun and laugh, and on road trips, she's the one singing at the top of her lungs, getting everyone invested in the travel ahead. She's also the one to panic in a frustrating situation. Nicole, on the other hand, is very even keel and is mostly just eager to explore the beautiful outdoors that awaits them all. She's the tiny one in the back seat with her headphones in consistently. Smiles and songs are exchanged as they move along, and then... Only 30 minutes into the drive, the wind catches the hood and rips it upwards, blinding Robert's vision of the road. He pulls off to the side of the road, digs out rope that one of the passengers had in their bag, and ties the hood down tight so they can continue their journey. Meanwhile, Eileen is calling AAA, not emergency police, and her mom. It's a brand new car! This shouldn't even be happening, she says. Robert calms her down by telling her it'll be okay, and that they'll get it fixed when they get back. She takes a deep breath, looks to Nicole, and Nicole smiles. They've been friends long enough that she doesn't need to say anything to Eileen. Hours pass by in the moments of silence, the moments of laughter, and in the moments of wrappers crumpling as meals come to an end. A transportation method that is so commonly used its very purpose is underappreciated. The same transportation that will take three individuals from one area of the country to another. To a different atmosphere, a different elevation level, a different culture, and a much more difficult time breathing. Finally, they've reached the Rocky Mountains. Nicole has been waiting for this moment for a very long time. Her eyes rapidly pan across the exquisite nature as it passes her by like the movement of a film reel. An endless and vast azure sky marked by an array of mountains that seem almost as beautiful as the person you lay next to at night. A powdery dust that covers the tops of the seemingly endless quantity of mountains. A powdery dust that swifts across the asphalt as they drive by, which encapsulates her. Bumps in the road are insignificant, persisting her serenity. A slight whistle flows through the window as her cheek rests upon it, and the sound gently strikes Nicole's eardrum. Eileen is still singing at the top of her lungs, giving a chihuahua a run for its money. <laughs> Suddenly, a jolt from the road sends a shock to the group. The road abruptly feels bumpy and unbalanced. Robert calmly turns his hazards on, his foot to the brake, and turns the wheel just slightly enough to have the tires meet the gravel on the side of the road. A flat tire. Are you kidding me? Something else is wrong? Eileen exclaims to everyone in the car, followed by a deep and almost fear-inducing sigh. Robert remains calm once again and begins unpacking all 13 bags from the trunk, 
again, so he can get to the location of the spare tire. Nicole offers assistance, but Robert insists he will take care of it, so she need not worry. Eileen, though, she's freaking out. Unsure of what's going to happen, one problem after another, it seems to her. This is her car, after all. Nicole takes her headphones out, tells Eileen to take a deep breath, and listen to the song she wants to play. They've known each other for so long, Nicole knows just what to do. It's the Dexie's Midnight Runner song, Come On Eileen. Eileen smiles and laughs, throws her sunglasses on, and the two of them dance to their favorite song on the shoulder of the road. Don't worry, they don't die. Robert gets the tires switched out while they dance with each other laughing, and they pursue their travels once more. Everyone is in a good mood now. They're in Colorado, and isn't everyone happy when they see something that impressively stunning? They continue along the road until they reach their campsite and prepare to unpack everything they've brought with them. Once everything is unraveled and set up, they start a fire, roast some mellows, and talk about the hell of a drive they've had that day. Everyone seems at peace and at ease. They finish their snacks and lay down together, staring at the vastness of the sky as it's turned dark all around them. No one needs to say anything. They got there. Mm, that's the end. I was kind of hoping for a serial killer at some point. No. Uh, I mean, come I, on, Eileen. <laughs> Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, so now we got to pay royalties. Good job. That was in 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah, it was barely even three. Wow. Hmm. So what do you guys think the moral of that story is? There's a few in there. I'm trying to. Insurance I'm- is important. <laughs> it is. It's very good. Make sure you have comprehensive. and oh, All right. Service. What are the questions? Um, no, I, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that was a moral. What I got from it is that life is what you make it. Don't focus on the things that can go wrong. Focus on the things that go right. I don't know, something along those lines. Life is what you make of it. It's a possibility. Life is a journey, and it's what you make of it. I'm just going to keep adding to it until I I get it. (laughs) Zach, what do you think? Um, I mean, or was insurance your actual answer? If it is, that's fine. It's sarcastic enough. The value of a road trip? Sort of. I don't know. Same. Something to do with a car. So I feel like everyone can kind of take their own moral from this because... Is it new cars are not worth what you pay for them? <laughs> That's true in this <laughs> Always situation. Always check the blue book. <laughs> yep. The moral of the story is that everyone travels in their own way with their individual personality, but the road trip and destination can make everything worth it. Ah. Ah, very concise. I yes. like it. That makes sense. And it's accurate. It's very accurate. Road everyone, trips are my, yeah. one of my favorite things to do, man. Love it. Oh, really? <laughs> You're like, uh, no, I don't like that. I That's like too staying. much fun. <laughs> Being coop- cooped up with the same people that long? I don't think so. You're a joy buzzer waiting to happen, you are. You know what, though? If I can like play my Nintendo Switch in the back seat. So now this is kind of lead directly into my first question, this conversation you guys are having right now. It, I have no input on a Nintendo Switch whatsoever. No, 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 not the Nintendo Switch. Oh, I think it's a great deal. <laughs> <laughs> My first question that I want to talk to you guys about is which of these three characters, if any of them, are you most like on a road trip? Oh. So what are you like on a road trip? Well, I'm trying I'm trying to remember Robert. Was- Robert's very quiet and calm. He stays very focused and gets any problems that come ar- come that arise, he gets them taken care of. Eileen is very fun and she likes to laugh a lot and she loves to sing and she keeps everything going, but when things don't go right, she panics, she, she panics and she has mm-hmm. a hard time dealing with it and she focuses on come on, what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> And so (laughs) it's perfect. And Nicole is the one who seems to understand what people who are in a troublesome situation need to calm down. And she's always willing to lend a hand if if somebody needs it. I'm Robert. You're Robert? I'm Robert. I get it. I get it handled and everybody else just needs to shut up. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Zach, what about you? Yeah, I guess I would lean towards Robert. Okay. You use the word quiet with him. So that sounds right. Yeah, he doesn't really talk much. He's just, he's kind of there. He's just along for the ride. Why do we have to be a caricature? Why can't we be a blending? You can. I want to be all three. You can. And that's what I, that's what my question is. If, if you're even any of these three. Oh, you mean like explain? Or what are you like if you're on a road trip? What, what do you like to do in the car when you're driving or if you're a passenger? I like to, well, I want to relax. I mean, if you're, if you're driving, typically pay attention to the road. (laughs) Big on that. (laughs) <laughs> but do you listen to podcasts? I usually do you listen, listen to, to podcasts. Music? I usually Keep listen to podcasts. Quiet? Yeah. Um, if, if people are in the car, though, I mean, it's it can be rude, honestly. If you have people in the car and you listen to podcasts and they want to converse, then you should, I think, try to have fun because you're going to be in the car for hours. So mm-hmm. try to have some fun. We actually did a road trip 
a couple of years ago, we went, drove to Yellowstone National Park, which is a day's drive. And you need people you can have fun with to enjoy that drive. And we ended up having a, a great time, probably more so out than back because back you're just tired, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, but going out, you're excited, you're elated, you're in, interested in where you're going, you're intrigued. And so you're talking about a lot of stuff and you're also, you, you have time to discuss personal stuff, uh, your family issues, problems at home. I mean, that's the cool thing about a road trip is you have people trapped in a car that have to do something together. And I, I love that. It's kind of like a bonding time for people. Or if Sounds like free therapy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Why isn't somebody getting paid for this? If you're a passenger, though, I mean, what are you like? Gas costs money. <laughs> if I'm a passenger, it's yeah. the same thing. I try to, It depends on the people because some people just want to zone out. You know, mm-hmm. um, but specifically with that group of guys, we're, we're close friends. So we just talk and buy. We don't play games. We don't play like billboard games and stuff like that. We just talk about stuff. And then eventually I might watch a movie. I mean, if it's a long enough trip, I might watch a movie. Read a book, something like that. No, nope, don't read a book in you a don't? car. No, in a car I can't because it's like um, I get motion sickness. Mm, okay. Maybe I'll get that or am I, am I alone? I get sickness being in like the back seat of a car, but I wouldn't say from reading while I'm it's in motion. It's your eyes, yeah, for whatever bouncing constantly. and whatever. It's it, the same yeah. reason why people get motion sickness from the back seat because their their vision is constantly trying to adjust from looking between mm-hmm. um, and seeing that far ahead. But Zach, what are you like as a driver and as a passenger, or do you just not do fun at all? <laughs> <laughs> be fun. I, I mean, I haven't driven in probably half a decade, so. Oh, that's right. You're Chicago. You don't drive. Yeah, Chicago. So, we don't need. We don't need the old cars. You guys are doing it wrong. Uh, you just go around so on stagecoaches, do you? <laughs> yes, stagecoach. What if uh, What if you were to drive right now? I push. I push the pedal, and the car moves. I mean, I like to listen to podcasts, but if there are people in the car, I'm not going to ha- put on a three hour video game podcast and just <laughs> irritate the hell out of them. When I used to drive, and there were people in the car, it would be radio off, and everyone was just talking about just whatever. Okay. And that was that was a lot of fun. We were making our own podcast. Ah, that's a good way to look at it. So, and, and as a passenger, which it sounds like you are commonly. <laughs> no, I'm not. No, well, I mean, if you're on a, a car here, you're, if you're on a train, or I mean, you are a passenger in some way or another, a bus. I'm you're a, on life's journey. <laughs> Is he though? <laughs> yes. Most people, as I remember, when they're in the car, like to listen to music and stuff, and I kind of don't like music or at least listening to it recreationally so i would usually just play on my phone or something okay are you a book reader can you read a book while you're <laughs> can you read <laughs> no i just Sometimes. Need, i just i don't need get, you mo- get motion, I don't get motion sickness, sickness through, through decades of training on video games so mm. like in here in the city whenever i'm on a bus or a train i will read something yeah okay there's an honest to god story when i was when we were doing our road trip i was trying to write a story I mean, obviously, we do this podcast for all kind of want to be authors in some respect. And I was writing a short story and I started and it was like hours later and I got finished like the first couple chapters of it. And I didn't notice it there. I didn't notice. That's where I learned I had motion sickness because I felt fine until I stopped. And then I instantly wanted to throw up. It was the weirdest feeling I've ever had. And it only happens when I read while I'm in a car. Read or or while I'm reading or typing or whatever while I'm in okay. a car. Okay, it's weird. You know, even even when you're writing, you're reading. Yeah, there you go. I mean, I, I don't. It was the weirdest feeling. I've never experienced something like that before. But I was sick mm-hmm. for hours after I stopped. Yeah, it can really mess with with somebody as a passenger. What about you? I guess it depends. Just like you guys have said, it depends on the people I'm with. If I'm taking a drive, I commute every day. So when I'm alone. I like to play music and sing to the top of my lungs or listen to a podcast on whatever topic I may want to listen to, whether it's Nerdist or The Hollywood Outsider or something like that. Or Smirk. Or Smirk. Well, I listen to those usually like while I'm getting ready just to make sure that I didn't screw up. Do you nod at yourself bad. when you hear your own voice? No. What's up? Polar opposite. Yeah, that, Why yeah, are yeah, you That's laughing? a good point I made. <laughs> Usually it's damn Zach, really again. Uh, yeah. But when I'm with a group of people, if it's a group that loves to sing while they're going, I'm all about that life. If it's a group of people who the 
the backseat passengers, if I'm driving, want to take a nap, then I'll play music or a podcast or something since they're not paying attention anyway. Mm -hmm. I don't mind talking while I'm driving. But for me, I have to have some sort of background music while I'm driving or I feel really, really uncomfortable because I learned to drive with music. That was the first thing, you know, when you're 16 or 15 years old and you're starting to drive and- I don't. I was 12. (laughs) Thanks, mom. Okay. Well, when you're young and you're first learning to drive and you're very nervous and anxious and your parents are like, don't don't wreck this car or I'm going to kill you. (laughs) Mm -hmm. You have a lot of anxiety from it. So the thing that helped calm me down as I was driving was listening to music. And that's what paced me. So if I'm not listening to music, I feel very uncomfortable. Even if it's just like jazz or piano in the background, I have to have something going. That's that's interesting. It's a calming effect. It is. Yeah. And it's I'm sure it's all just psychological since that's how I learned to be calm was just from that. But Yeah. And if I'm a passenger, like on a train or something in that sort of travel, I love reading a book while I'm listening to music like jazz. Let's be honest. If you're on a train or a bus, you're doing whatever you can to keep your eyes focused on just you because you don't (laughs) want freaky people talking or coming near you, right? Well, I have had some really good experiences listening to crazy people on the train, though. The last time I was on a train, it was pretty Um, interesting. Mentally struggled. All right. They no, they were criminals and they were bragging about their criminal activity and Did you record it? Turn it into the authorities? I tweeted it. <laughs> I tweeted their, I tweeted their crimes. <laughs> I did. They were having this very open and loud conversation and I couldn't miss it. So I just started tweeting some of the ridiculous things they were saying. But yeah. Keep an eye on Amanda's Twitter. You might learn some crimes. <laughs> Next thing I kind of want to talk to you guys about is there was a lot of situations in the story that could be seen as problems or could just be seen as, you know, part of traveling. Would you let any of those problems deter you from continuing on a trip or as a sign that you shouldn't be going if it's the initial problem or if you have like a second or third? Would you keep going or are you more like Eileen and kind of freaking out in terms of issues if it's specifically your vehicle, I guess? I, I relish in chaos, you know, <laughs> yeah, things going wrong doesn't really slow me down or deter me. I certainly don't see any signs ever. You don't believe it's karma or it's a, 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 a sign of things to come? No, that's a, that's a silly thing to think everyone. <laughs> so you definitely don't believe in, in the threes, like it he comes in threes. Everyone <laughs> pay attention. That's dumb. Stop it. Listen up. <laughs> uh, what about you, Aaron? I would. I keep going. I keep going. I've been on a road trip. Yeah, things always happen. If you're taking a long road trip, things are going to happen. Mm-hmm. Be prepared for things to happen. I mean, it would take a lot. Like if I ran over a person, I might turn back. <laughs> That's about the only thing that I think would would make me turn around is if I felt horrible for something that happened. But like cracked windshield, I've had it happen. I kept going. Lots of things have happened. Flat tires happened. I kept going. I mean, you just handle it. It's just that's part of life. I think some people think they have a car and nothing should ever go wrong. It just doesn't – that's not how life works. You can't control the road Mm -hmm. and where nails are and where things happen, where your car breaks down. I mean, if your car broke down and it cost you like five grand to fix it, maybe that's where you turn – maybe you just can't afford to go on. Mm -hmm. That would be a reason to turn around. But if just because of fate, like, oh, no, this means I'm going to die later. I'm going to die eventually anyway. Might as well try to push on, have some fun before I go, right? Fair enough. Carp DM. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, wow. that's a, not how you carpe, pronounce it. Carpe diem. You know what? I'm getting tired of you correcting me with your correctness. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. Uh, well, I guess I am partial to two different people in this scenario when it comes to troubles. I get really frustrated. and It's understandable. I do. And I sometimes it, – it's more just me dealing with the frustration myself and I have to just kind of leave me alone for a few minutes while I – stop being mad about whatever the hell is happening, like Mm -hmm. the tire being flat and your windshield popping up. Like if it's bent in your hoods, like it's a brand new car, you're going to be mad about that. Why did this even happen? Why is my latch broken? But I also wouldn't let that stop me from continuing. Whether that's stupid or not, I don't know, but it would take me a lot to be like, no, I'm not taking this trip anymore. If I'm going on a trip, I'm so determined to take that trip. It's going to take a lot to get me to turn around. So I've broken my ankle and I was like, and I didn't have cruise control in the car. And I drove back nine hours on a broken ankle and drove with my left foot. So Did it, you go up, up uphill in snow? <laughs> no. Both ways. Both ways? 
I'm not. No, no. There's something I really love about the sense, and I didn't even have cruise control. <laughs> Whoa, I, watch well, out, people. <laughs> Because I had real. to drive with my left foot. <laughs> it was my right foot that broke. So. I mean, couldn't you just like prop the broken foot on it and it'd be fine? No. Oh. It was it was so excruciating for I'm me sure to even. Glad you didn't have to slam on the brakes at any point. <laughs> I did get pulled over because I was speeding. And he was like, Why is your foot in the passenger seat? Did he give you a ticket? No. Oh, that's a cool cop. I cried. A Good lot. on you, officer. Good on <laughs> I didn't you. like not intentionally oh. cried, but I was so emotional because throw the crocodile tears in this guy. Ate him up. <laughs> Sucker. <laughs> he could see that my foot was it was huge. It was so swollen and I had crutches right next to it. And I was like, I just broke my ankle. I'm just trying to get home. It's a Sunday. It's a nine hour drive. Like I'm just I'm almost home. I am thirty five minutes away from my house. I was like, you can follow me all the way home and I won't speed again. I just don't have cruise control and I stopped focusing too much on my speed and I'm sorry. Can I just point out that only works with females. I don't know what it is. (laughs) I'm not trying to make it a sexist thing, but I have been in the same situation and I just got a ticket. They don't care. Oh, you're a guy. You tough it out. Man it up or whatever. And I could be with I could be with the lady and that happens. And then you're like, oh, no, go ahead, ma'am. I understand you're having a rough day. What? I had the same day and you gave me the ticket. <laughs> I've gotten plenty of tickets before too. Well, Good. I sh- shouldn't say plenty, but I've had a few. <laughs> Let's keep it <laughs> equal. <laughs> but he was a very, he was nice. So I guess there are That's like, a cool story. nice situations out there. But I rear-ended my uh, friend Dennis when I was <laughs> when I was 16 or 17. We were going to ride horses or something like that. Never happened again. You drove to go ride horses. We were, I was following him. Oh, you, guys are, you guys are real straight. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm still... <laughs> I'm still trying to understand how I rear-ended him. I'm convinced he didn't turn his turn signal on, but whatever. I ended up rear-ended him and like really doing some damage, and we still kept going and rode horses and then went back. Is this an analogy for something dirtier in the bedroom? No. Why Why would I use an analogy? I'd just be like, we had dem- <laughs> demand sex in the yes, we yes, had demand. Back those horses. I would just be honest about it. No, it was, it was actually vehicles. That's what happened. <laughs> well, this got derailed. Go ahead. Did he, did he get mad at you? Did he get mad at me? No, yeah. he milked every he milked it for everything oh, he could. Perfect. He's, for thirty he, years. <laughs> yeah, we're still friends, and I still remember. It. If you're listening, Dennis, I still remember what you did because his car was total. It was a piece of crap. It was barely running as it was, and I think they gave him a payout. And like, if he took over a thousand dollars, my rates would go up. And instead of taking under a thousand dollars, he went like eleven or twelve hundred or something like that. And I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> bad move, man. Ouch. But I did total his car, so. I so mean, you did him a favor. If it was a piece of crap, you helped him out. Didn't do me a favor. Cost me more. <laughs> but you helped him. Mm. So <clears throat> I guess now my my last question will kind of make this more of a concise episode, it seems. But where is one place you guys would like to travel? And it doesn't have to be in the country that you're currently living in. Anywhere in the world, where would you like to travel? And why would you like to go to that place? Zach, do you like to travel places and see new things? Or is Chicago it for you? Yeah, I've seen plenty of Illinois. So <laughs> I'm all good. Yeah. <laughs> that's all that's all the world has to offer. <laughs> that, what more is there? Uh, I've always wanted to go to Japan, the Mecca of video games. Mm. That would be really cool. They have like all these themed cafes for video games, and then Akihabara has a bunch of old used game stores and the whole nerdy, geeky thing is much more mainstream there. So it always just seemed like a lot of fun. So I'd like to go there. And also the food's great. From what you hear. Oh, I've maybe had Japanese hurt, food. But maybe yeah. it's worse. Over they they look pretty Japanese when they're cutting up my sushi. <laughs> so I've, I believe I've had Japanese food. They're probably, they probably been, they were born here. So they don't know anything about Japan other than what they learned at that Shogun restaurant. Ito <laughs> Sushi in Chicago, Illinois was here for 70 years and his grandparents immigrated so back off. Whoa. Oh, you know the whole story with this guy. He's yeah. The history oh, we, down. I, I was a regular. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> You're serious about your sushi. I guess. Love sushi. My, my brother really wants to go there too. So maybe you guys can piggyback. I've always wanted to go to Australia. Could with all I? the spiders? No, with Crocodile Dundee, man. I want to go there and see what a real knife is. That's you and Danny like. McBride. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Outside of Danny McBride, I actually want to go. I, th- I think Australia is... A, it looks like a beautiful country. Everybody I know that it's ever gone has said it's a it's an amazing place to visit. The outback is beautiful. I mean, yeah, dangerous, but also beautiful. It's just it's just one of those places where I'd I'd love to go. Ireland is up there too. Ireland is my number one. That's if I could choose anywhere in the world. Why Ireland? It just is it the accent. 
Well, actually, the accents are beautiful. Because you can I, buy the whiskey here now. <laughs> the culture, I'm actually not a whiskey drinker. I would drink whiskey, and it makes me puke, but I would drink whiskey in Ireland. Oh, see, that's, I'm sorry. I love sake as well, so oh, it's another go. Japanese thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but in terms of Ireland, the culture, the everything that, that the Irish people stand for is just means a lot to me, I guess. I've always been fascinated by Ireland and its beauty and everything that's surrounding it and its history. So for me, I've thought about if I would want to visit there by myself and I would love to take that trip by myself, but I've ultimately come to the conclusion I'm going to save that for my honeymoon. Like I'm not getting married if you don't want to go to to Ireland on our honeymoon. It's just going to... Well, that seems like you're not taking the other party into account. Really starting off well on the We can go elsewhere. (laughs) We can go elsewhere after, but like Ireland is going to be a part of it. Honey, I love you, but my needs come first. (laughs) In this situation. Always. It's my honeymoon, not ours. (laughs) But see, if I find somebody I'm going to marry and we're compatible enough, they'll want to go to Ireland for our honeymoon as well. That sounds like if they're they're agreeable. That doesn't really sound like a partnership. No, you just, where do you want to go? I would love to go to Ireland. Great. This is a great start. Let's have our second date. That's That's your opener? (laughs) I'm excellent at dating. I'm just uh, kidding. I wouldn't. I wouldn't force somebody to do that. But that's my my dream would be to have that. Be Zach, she is totally backtracking right now. She was <laughs> sold on this. And now we gave her a little grief. She's like, Oh no, I was just kidding. <laughs> I would never. Force no, somebody. that's I, a lie. I would not force somebody. I wouldn't. Your Tinder profile is Ireland but first. I don't have, I don't have Tinder, <laughs> <laughs> but it's just it's really gorgeous from what I've seen. I have friends who live over in Ireland, and I get pictures and videos occasionally, and inside the pubs and everything, and it's oh, it's so amazing to see. Drunk people. I mean, yes, there are a lot of drunk people, which aren't necessarily my favorite in terms of that. But I feel like the the drunks in Ireland, the drunks in Ireland are much different than American drunk. I think drunks are just drunk. I don't think there's distinctions by geography. They just have different accents. They people react differently, and from what I've seen, Irish people fight. I know I'm part Irish. That's what they do. (laughs) But they're sweet. They mean well. They fight so sweetly. It's very, it's very nice. Right? Yeah. They use their fists, not their words. Hey, I don't know. People like what they like. If, if you, that's why you want to go to Ireland so you can see drunk Irish people. I totally understand. No, I do want to experience <laughs> that as a culture and and experience all of them being drunk and me being drunk with them for a night or something. But it's mostly just the land. Like the land is the biggest part of it, and the history and the architecture. And I want to go to some haunted places too. I think that would be really. That'd be fun. cool. Yeah, mm-hmm. that'd be cool. So what do you guys think? Is this story truth or is it fiction? Uh, fiction. I want to say fiction, but probably hints of truth. It's actually <laughs> mostly truth. Uh, I had no, that's not that's not that's not the show. It's truth or fiction. It's truth or fiction. You got to pick one. It's truth with exaggeration. How so? The flat tire didn't happen. The hood did happen, but the rest of it pretty much. You said a stretch reality with the flat tire, huh? Well, they needed to encounter more than one. Did problem. you go to the Rocky Mountains? No, this wasn't my story. This was a, a oh yeah gotcha. No, I would so love somebody to go else's there. truth mm-hmm. Interesting. with a little bit of exaggeration. Gotcha. I changed the Eileen. So it's a person. Yeah, the Eileen person is very different, but in that situation, so the truth, fiction, or triction? That's smart. Triction. <laughs> All right. So, what's the title of your story? Do you have a title? So this story is titled "Come On, Eileen." Hey, that works. I think that's funny. Mm-hmm. It's perfect. I get it. I and get it, everyone. The best song ever created. Well, let's settle down. Yeah, I mean, in the air tonight. Oh, I guess that part didn't happen either. I made that up yeah. because I love the song. <laughs> so really, it is fiction. No, the the whole trip in the hood happening and all of that, that was all true. They did probably have 13 bags, too. I saw pictures. It was ridiculous. It was two days. I thought we agreed that it was triction. <laughs> it's, yeah, I like triction. Let's leave it with triction. I don't know if we could just be making words up. Why not? All right. Good call. <laughs> <laughs> Words are made up when they're added to the dictionary, so. Oh, come on. No, we're not. Yeah, we're, let's not have this talk. <laughs> it's truth. <laughs> Listeners, as our show goes, we will occasionally pick listener stories to read and discuss on Smirk. If you'd like to have the chance to have yours read, email it to my story at smirkpodcast.com. And we do have a couple that are coming up. So looking forward to those. One thing I want to do real quick. We did get some email from people, or I'm sorry, we got comments from people saying, can you, you know, explain who you are briefly? Because we never have on the show. So. Just real quick, go around the how you got into podcasting, Zach. Oh man, <laughs> wow, my biography. You want to start from like six or what? No, succinct. Let's succinct. leave the daddy issues out. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, I used to guest on Remake This Movie Right with uh, Aaron a decent amount. Did a show with Aaron and uh, Justin McCumber, May You Rest in Peace, uh, for about 24, Live Another Day. That was kind of my big first magnum opus. And then Aaron uh, re- recruited me into Amanda and a Smirk. So I'm here now. I do some writing with uh, Scott Clark of The Hollywood Outsider over at The Gaming Outsider. And I also have my own site called We Love to Game. And that's me. All right. Amanda? Aaron and I have done quite a few episodes of Remake This Movie Right. I've done some episodes on The Hollywood Outsider, which is Aaron's podcast that he hosts regularly each week. Very fun podcast. I started listening because of The Hollywood Outsider. And because of that and having a couple glimpses into the podcasting realm on guest spots for The Ho, I got into Remake This Movie Right. And that's kind of led me into this and being able to go on go back on to the Hollywood Outsider, write some film reviews for them. So it's been an it's been an interesting ride. Zach and I have similar experiences in terms of that, but I don't have a video game website. So You should. I can help you with insurance though if you have questions. Every, everybody <laughs> no. should have a video game website. Uh, and myself, I started podcasting years ago with the Hollywood Outsider, which is a movie and TV podcast and uh, award winning. I'm sorry, award winning. Yep. TV and movie podcast. I also do two TV companion podcasts, Beyond Westworld, which is for Westworld, and the also award-winning Blacklist Exposed for the show Blacklist, and then Remake This Movie Right, as these guys alluded to, and I've been doing it for about six and a half years, and wanted to do a podcast that didn't focus on film and television, and these guys were the perfect fit. So, there we go. And we're both, we're all three, we're all three authors in some way, or, or want to be authors. We enjoy writing, we enjoy the concept of, of writing and experiencing that writing with other people, so that's kind of where this podcast came from and i guess some people ask well you guys never explained yourself and the reason why is because that's always boring on podcasts when people do that mm-hmm. you know when they talk about their personal lives but there you go so if those people that wanted to know now you know follow me on twitter at zach parker <laughs> <laughs> in closing join the conversation by joining our facebook group smirk we're on facebook smirk i think it's smirk podcast right smirk podcast i don't remember or smirk on facebook and follow us on twitter at smirk podcast and be sure to use the show's hashtag smirk Don't miss an episode. Be sure to subscribe to Smirk on your podcast app of choice and check out our website at smirkpodcast.com. It's just Smirk. Okay. And as you write your own life story, always remember to tell it with a Smirk.